What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is the, the beginning of last week's video. So how I took those photos, how I made these images with the beautiful bokeh in the background, yet very sharp images. Using nothing but a homemade diffuser with one light. I mean, you can see how cool that looks and how it diffuses the light perfectly. <laughs> to make the diffuser, I just took some uh, foam cork board and I, I just cut it. I made a, a window and this is actually tissue paper. This is just for gift wrapping, just regular tissue paper. I cut it out, I used some Gorilla Tape, it's taped in the corners and then I cut some feet so that it can stand on its own and I don't have to worry about holding it or leaning it against something. Very simple, homemade diffuser, works perfectly especially when we're talking drinks, small objects, things like that. I, I, that's how I started with 10 years ago. Today I have these. I'm not gonna be using these LED lights. All the lights I'm gonna be using for this photo is this one light. So if I could do it in here, inside of a motorhome, anybody could do it, guys, come on. Now, when I made the video, the original video that led to this one, I talked about how I used the Canon 7D with the 50 millimeter 1.4 beautiful lens great camera the problem is i broke the lens i dropped it when i was getting it out of the drawer it fell and now it only works at 1.4 so i cannot use this anymore i am going to use the 70 to 200 it's the same thing same setup i did it with this years ago you could do it with this today but for this video i'm going to be using the 70 to 200 at 2.8 because i want that blurred background uh, the 24 to 70 might do it, but to get even close to the bokeh that this lens gives me, I need the 200 to wait. I'm also going to be filming myself with the GoPro and the new gimbal uh, when I'm taking those photos. So the first thing I did was add this black board here to the background because I want a complete dark background. That will give me uh, a better bokeh with the one light. If it's too light, it's gonna get lost in translation and you're not gonna see it. That's why I have this cardboard and I just taped it to the kitchen counter. Simple. Then I stacked these glasses. These glasses are gonna give me that off-focus bokeh, bokeh, however you wanna pronounce it. So this is what's gonna give me that, that beautiful creamy background. Uh, I'm gonna stack these here. I didn't break it. Now that they're stacked, I'm going to set my the photogenic dish right here. And I have it on a cutting board so I can get a little bit of a break between the front and the back of the photo. So the cocktail I was going to do for this, it's, uh, let me see if anybody can name it. Uh, Malibu rum, 151 rum, and pineapple juice. Because of different things, I could not get 151. I could not find a small bottle of Malibu or even pineapple juice. So I'm gonna be using Everclear. Why? Because it is a flaming drink. It needs to have some flames in order to get the desired results. So Everclear burns. Be very careful when you're using alcohol, especially in small areas like this. I don't wanna burn down my motorhome. The next thing I need is ice. And yes, you're inside of my freezer because I have a leak in the gasket and I have a lot of ice like this in the back. That ice back there is gonna be perfect because I need crushed ice. In order to make this work, I need distance between my, my drink, my flaming cocktail, and the background. And you can see I don't have a lot. That's why I'm using the 24, or the, the 70 to 200 millimeters. If I zoom in, it's gonna exaggerate that distance. So at 200 millimeters, 2.8, I don't have a lot of room on this side either. <laughs> So that is the biggest challenge. Now, if I could do it here, you could do it anywhere. The light, the main light source is going to go right here. And then I'm gonna put the diffuser right here. That'll give me light on the cocktail and I'll move the camera over here so you can see what I'm doing. And very evenly light up the drink and give me the results uh, that I want. I'm also gonna block and shut off every other light because I don't want any other light influencing what this light is doing. You can see how here it goes through the, the diffuser and over there to the glasses. So that'll give me the bokeh and the light on the cocktail. Perfect. Now I'm gonna take you over there so you can see this way and how things are turning out. 
All right, guys, so I switched to the GoPro. You can see what I got going on here. Uh, the glass looks beautiful. This is the light you're seeing in the reflection. I will shut that off when I'm taking a picture. For now, I'm zoomed in at 200 millimeter. This is as close as I can get to focus, and the background looks awesome. So I'm gonna uh, start with the cocktail. I'm gonna get the ice prepared. For this particular drink, I put an ice dome on top of the glass as it's flaming, and this gives it a cascading effect, like a fog falling down from the drink. This is, again, you're working with fire, so be very careful. And the ice dome is just a citrus squeezer that you use to squeeze. You put crushed ice, you squeeze as hard as you can, then you have a dome, and you put that on top of your glass. Easy. Let me go get the ice, get some flames going, and show you how this happens. Before we start taking photos, you want your camera on aperture priority because you're going to go from uh, f2.8 or f1.4 to f11. You don't want other things changing there, so keep it on aperture priority. Lock your ISO at 100 and put your white balance on manual, uh, whatever color light you're using. The rest, the camera will take care of. I feel like that's way too bright for the GoPro. But for now, aperture priority, uh, start with 2.8 and then switch over to F11. You can't really do this with speed lights or you're gonna have to modify the, the intensity of each from two, from F2.8 to F11 and the drink is time sensitive. You're not gonna have that much time. You also need a tripod because you, you cannot handhold uh, at these speeds. This is very dark, one light, is not, uh, one light source is not very bright. So you want a solid tripod and no movement so that your images are sharp and you can actually do something with those photos. Also, the camera's gonna be in a two second timer to avoid any movement. F2.8, now let's go to F13. This is six seconds, so no movement whatsoever. Now the other thing I recommend, I don't know if you can see me, it's dark in here. The other thing I recommend is doing multiple shots because something is going to move, especially working with fire and ice. Things are gonna shift, so take a lot of photos. Also remember to clean your glassware so you're avoiding all the work I did last week on the video because this, they're used and they're not the best, but for pictures and flames, I was afraid I was gonna break some of mine. So just make sure to clean them and leave as, li as little as possible to post. Okay, that looks shiny. All right, so here's the drink, here's the camera. I'm gonna, I got focus, and now I'm gonna switch it to manual focus so it doesn't change while I'm doing the fire or adding the ice. Uh, and I'm gonna, I need to shut this light off. I don't know if you can see me. Here's the ice, the ice squeezer thing. I have the dome, I have to light the drink. There's some flames. I'm gonna add some cinnamon to make it sparkle. It looks really pretty. Uh, but I'm not doing video, so you can't see that. Here's the dome. Okay, run, wait, here goes the fog. One photo at 2.8. Oh, that looked awesome, but it fell. Okay, ah. Okay, the big glass did not work because it is way too large and the ice just falls through. All right, guys, here we go. Uh, stabilizers off, everything off on the camera. There's the drink, give it a second. So you can see in the video how it just fogs and cascades down and it looks amazing. But you can also see how every step I take, it shakes the camera. So remember to hold steady, no movement. There you go, that's the effect I was looking for. Okay, where we go, here's the gimbal. If you go to the menu, the menu is going to be number five on the on the Canon R5, and there's focus bracketing. It's enabled 25 shots at an increment of four because I want that, it's a 2.8, so I want small increments so that I can get a clear image. Okay, now let's take those photos. Okay, so that is enabled, it's ready to go. Two second timer, where's my drink? Fire. Here's my ice dome thingy. Put that on top, get back here, set the camera, wait for the fog. There's the fog, two seconds. And now the camera is going to do 25 photos. Yeah. 
and don't be afraid of using different props, different types of ice cubes or different anything that could give you a similar effect. Uh, different glasses, different colors, add some juice to the drink, just anything that can make it look different and better. You can see how easy it is to set up a studio with a makeshift light diffuser thingy. It can, uh, it's very easy, you can play with the light, learn a lot about light and get some really good images while you're doing it. If you want to see how to put these images together, go ahead and watch this video. <laughs> if you haven't, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you get notified every time I make a new video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Still here.